good afternoon children are you fine see we are passing through a challenging situation and i know it is very difficult one we want to be alive we want to meet again isn't it we want to meet again don't we so please don't step out of your house act wisely be a sensible and mature person okay so please busy yourself in the learning work today i am going to take up the supplementary reader no 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 don't get worry don't get worried i need you to have the book by tomorrow okay as usual i am going to narrate the story first then we can go through the text today you just listen i'm going to summarize the lesson detailedly and then when you read you will understand everything in case if there is any problem while reading i can explain okay so the lesson is the midnight visitor by robert arthur i think uh, we had it done with lesson number 2 if not we can do the lesson separately when the school reopens is yes, okay so let us begin with the name of the lesson it is about a visitor a guest who comes at midnight does anyone visit at midnight no not usually Uh, some thieves or uh, some anti social elements become active at midnight so here the midnight visitor is a cunning spy who is a threat to the nation as a whole the midnight visitor is not a good fellow he is a cunning spy when the story opens we can see two characters osable a u s a b l e osable and fowler f o w l e r osable was a very famous renowned well known acclaimed secret agent he was known far and wide for dealing in espionage espionage what is that the practice of spying or working as a secret agent such people obtain information about the plans and activities especially of a foreign government or a competing company these people find out the secrets behind any government or competing companies so we have seen two characters osable and fowler osable is a secret agent let us go to fowler fowler was a writer a romantic writer he wrote special or sensational news he had taken an appointment with osable and came to meet him osable was staying in a french hotel in a small ordinary room on the 6th and top floor as i told you fowler was young and romantic he was interested to know the life of that well known secret agent because he had read about him a lot but when he met him he became disappointed or he became unhappy 
because he found him a very different person. He found possible a very different person from what he had imagined. He did not fit into any of the descriptions of a secret agent. That means he did not find Osabel as he imagined him to be. Osabel took him to his own room, which was, I told you, on the sixth and the top floor of the French hotel. He followed him. While following, Fowler become, became very sad to see the secret agent because he was very fat. Who was fat? The secret agent was very fat. He was fat, very fat. His accent, the manner of speaking, was not purely German. He knew French and German comfortably well, but he spoke them in an American accent and he looked like a careless man, a sloppy man. So all these things made Fowler unhappy and he was not at all impressed by the secret agent's appearance and accent language. The first impression was so bad. Okay, let's see. As they were going towards Osable's room, where was Osable's room? You know, on the sixth and top floor of the French hotel. As they were going towards Osable's room, Osable sensed, he understood, Fowler's disappointment and he promised him and he cheered him that there was something sensational waiting for him in the room. He told him that at midnight that night he would receive an important paper which would affect the course of history of the country. For such an important paper many men and women had risked their lives. So he, sure, he was sure that there would be some dramatic scenes, some unexpected turns and twists, some anti-climax, and it would surely impress Fowler, because Fowler was a sensational writer. They reached Oswald's room. Oswald opened the door with a key and allowed Fowler to get in first. Then Osabel got in. He closed the door and switched on the light. In the light, he saw something shocking inside the room. A man was standing in the middle of the room with an automatic pistol in his hand pointed towards them. You know it was a locked room. Possible Ali opened it. How the man came inside the room? Possible blinked his eyes. Then in a few minutes he identified him as Max M A X. Who was Max? Another secret agent. His enemy. He wanted to know what he was doing in Osable's room. Osable wanted to know what Max was doing in his room. <laughs> Max answered very calmly. You know why did he come? Yes, he had come to get the paper. Yes, he answered very calmly that uh, he wanted that paper which was expected that night. Yes, there is a scene. Set for thrill. Yes, you know. Fowler was very say, scared now. He looked at Max. How was Max looking? He was slender. He was thin. 
and almost tall. You cannot call him tall, but almost tall. And was looking as cunning as a fox. He was very cunning. His face was telling that he was like a fox. There was an automatic pistol in his hands. How did Oswald react? Very coolly, very calmly. Oswald sat heavily on an armchair. What's an armchair? A chair with arm rests. You can rest your arms on that chair. Yes. And started to blame the hotel management for not blocking the balcony under the window of his room. And Fowler couldn't understand what the man was speaking. Both of their lives are in danger. The man is speaking about some balcony. He is blaming the hotel management. He told that it was the second time that somebody was entering into his locked room through the balcony. That means the room was unsafe. He knew very well that the room was unsafe. Somebody could enter into his room from the window. How is it possible? You know he is staying on the sixth floor. Is it possible? No, nobody can believe it. Let us see what happened. What is there? He told that it was the second time that somebody was entering into his locked room through the balcony. And Max explained to him, told him that he was not aware of the balcony. He entered in the room using a pass key. He had come through the main door only, door only, not through the window. Hearing that, Max said that he had no idea about the balcony. He used a pass key to open the door. The knowledge of the balcony would have made him made his entry easier. He was not aware that there was a balcony right under his window and that he could have easily entered into the room through that. Fowler could not understand anything about the balcony. Usable said that. He started explaining how the balcony came right under his window. Oswald said that the room in which he was staying was once a part of a big room, a living room. It was an apartment which had a balcony. The living room had a balcony. When the hotel management converted that room into small room, into a small room, they forgot to block the balcony. They did not knock down the balcony. It is still there. So anybody could enter into the room through the window. The window is a sliding window. So through the balcony, anybody can climb to the climb the window. Then from the window they can jump into the room. Fowler wanted to know whether he was telling the truth. But it was a night and it was dark out so he could not find anything. Fowler looked at the window. It was a single window and he could not find anything more about the window in the darkness. Max ordered Fowler to sit as he was standing stiffly because he was frightened away from Osable. Where is Osable now? Osable is already sitting. Max told Osable that he would have to wait half an hour more for the paper to arrive. Osable felt very relaxed. He said moodily, he said very happily that there were 31 minutes left for the arrival of the paper. The paper was expected at 12.30 a.m. Suddenly there was a knock at the door. Fowler jumped up from the chair. 
and Max became suspicious. He wanted to know who was at the door. Osobel told him very calmly that it was the police. He had called the police to have a check on him before the paper arrived. Now Max was highly confused. He wanted to hide himself from the police. He had to wait half an hour for that paper, you know. The knocking continued with a voice. Mr. Osobel, Mr. Osobel. Now Max wanted to hide somewhere for a few minutes. So he warned both Osobel and Fowler to send the police away without creating any doubt in them. And keeping the pistol pointed towards both of them, he moved towards the window. By then the knock had become louder and the door knob turned. The police was trying to open the door. Max still, Max, <coughs> sorry, still the pistol pointed towards the door, swung his one leg and then the other over the windowsill and the moment the door knob turned, he jumped into the balcony to hide himself. As he jumped, there was a scream, a shrill cry. <coughs> then the door was opened. It was Henry, the waiter of the hotel. He came in with a tray, a bottle of drink and two glasses because Osabel had ordered for that. He arranged the glass, glasses and opened the bottle and left the room. Fowler became pale with fear. He expected that the police would come and protect them from this uh, cunning spy. He saw that there was no police and no protection. It was time for the paper to arrive and Max would shoot both of them. He asked Osable, the police? There were no police, only Henry whom I was suspecting. But won't that man out in the balcony? No, said Osable, he won't return. You see, my young friend, there is no balcony. Is it an interesting story? Let us read it tomorrow. Okay? Till then, see you. Bye.